As the downturn in the oil and gas business continues to erode Oklahoma state budget, there is one business sector that is providing an economic engine for people living in northeast Oklahoma. The Cherokee Nation has announced a record-breaking financial impact on the region. A new study shows a tremendous growth in everything from jobs to health care in just the last two years. It seems that everywhere you look in communities within the Cherokee Nation, you see new businesses opening up and construction projects underway. A new report sheds light on the prosperity. According to Oklahoma City economist Dr. Russell Evans, the Cherokee Nation's economic impact on Northeast Oklahoma now exceeds $2 billion, up from $1.55 billion two years ago. Chuck Hoskin, Jr. is the Cherokee Nation Secretary of State. We now employ over 11,000 people in Northeast Oklahoma. That's just direct employment. And of course, when you look at the construction jobs that we're creating with our projects, when you look at the jobs that we create through the people that do business with Cherokee Nation locally, people have a better opportunity to earn a decent living. It was 12 years ago that Oklahoma voters gave the nod to Indian nations to offer casino-style gambling. The Hard Rock Casino in Catoosa was the Cherokee's first casino. It now has 10 of them across the 14 counties situated within the nation. And the casinos are growing jobs and spawning new business. Take, for instance, South Coffeyville, Oklahoma in Nowata County. Two years ago, the tribe built a casino which employs 150 people. The Cherokee Nation then worked on further improving South Coffeyville's economy by encouraging Star Pipe Products of Houston to start manufacturing here. That's going to be, I think, over 250 jobs, close to 300 jobs. So you look at South Coffeyville, a community that has about 850 people in it, and you look at the jobs that we're creating, it's going to change that community. Profits from gaming have been used to diversify Cherokee business interests and in turn grow new revenue. Forty percent of our revenue on our business side now comes from uh, areas outside of gaming. So that means we're diversifying. That means we're doing more than gaming. That means we're into IT. That means we're into construction. That we're means we're into security contracts and things of that nature. And profits are also being shared with Cherokee Nation citizens. Money is being infused into housing, education, and health care. To see all the monies go back into the communities with the housing and the health care and to, to lead up to this is just, it's unbelievable. So, so 15 years ago versus today is, yeah, it's outstanding. The Cherokee Nation helped Brian Cooper start a construction company employing other Cherokees. He's now a construction consultant on a new $200 million outpatient facility being built with Cherokee money right behind the Cherokee's W.W. Hastings Hospital. Right now, 300 people are employed to construct the four-story, 469,000 square foot building. When it opens in 2019, the outpatient clinic will employ 800 people. Progress and prosperity appear to be contagious in the nation. And to be able to help Cherokee families just personally with our company and, and, and see their families grow and be able to purchase their own homes, to purchase their own cars and, and even a couple of past employees have started their own businesses from um, seeing, they look at me and say, man, he done it, I can do that. And, and to be able to see that happen is just self-gratifying all through and through. The Cherokee Nation's investment in its people and strengthening their economy is paying off. Hoskins says maybe the state of Oklahoma should take heed. And they're in a terrible budget crisis. Instead of adding to education, you know, we gave $5 million to Oklahoma Public Schools last year. The state is cutting education. Instead of putting money into higher education, Cherokee Nation put over $14 million into higher education in the form of scholarships for our people. The state's cutting higher education. And that strategy that the state has, it's not really a strategy, it's a catastrophe. Hoskins says while it may cost the tribe money to boost the region's quality of life, the investment comes back many times over.